Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology. In this video we're going through something different again. It is going to be a mass transport and nervous coordination question, both on the exams 2022 topic list. And it's going to be a maths question and application question that I'm modelling, but I'm quite literally going to be modelling it. So I'd like to say a huge thank you again to Check Me for sending through another awesome piece of kit. This time it's going to let me measure my ECG, which is enabling me to be the person in the exam question. So if you are new here, my name is Ms. Estrick, a biology teacher and tutor of over 10 years, here to help you get to grips with those most challenging concepts in biology, improve your study skills technique, and to help you get the grades that you deserve. So I've just had this strapped around my chest, touching skin just here for a few minutes to collect the data. Now I need to take the device off and I'm going to plug it into my Mac to have a look at the data to analyze. Okay, and here are my results of my ECG at rest. How cool is this? So it shows you one second. That is what we've seen in one second. And if we wanted to work out the heart rate, we could go from peak to peak to work that out. So the first thing we need to do is work out how long one beat takes. And the easiest way to do that is just find the repetitive point. So let's say from peak to peak. And for me, we can see that is going one, two, three point two large squares. So working this out, the five large squares, which is actually 25 squares, equals one second. So each of those small squares would be one divided by 25, which is 0 0.04. Now my peak to peak is 15, 16, 17 squares, let's say. And 17 times 0 0.04 is 0 0.68. So that means it took 0 0.68 seconds for one heartbeat. But if I want to work out how many beats per minute that is, I would then do 60 divided by 0 0.68 see how many times one heartbeat fits into a minute and that gives us 88.253 beats per minute. Okay so let's have a go at the exam questions then. I'm going to type them or write them as we go through. So for the first one we've got an electrocardiogram or ECG shows the electrical activity of the heart. Figure one shows an ECG for an adult female and each spike represents a contraction of the ventricles. So I'm just gonna to go to be able to draw here. We've shown that five large squares is one second, and that's actually 25 squares in total. So if we were to do one divided by 25 to work out what each small square is worth, that would be 0.05. Now to work out the um, time taken for one cardiac cycle on this particular ECG, which is my ECG at rest, we would need to go from peak to peak. So we're looking at repeating patterns indicating a new cardiac cycle. So from peak to peak here, we can see that it is um, 15, 16, 17 small squares. So 17 small squares, so 17 times 0 0.04, and that equals um, 0 0.68. So one cardiac cycle takes 0 0.68 seconds, but we want to know beats per minute. So there are 60 seconds in a minute, and let's see how many times that would fit, or how many times one cardiac cycle would fit into a minute. So 60 divided by 0.68, and that comes to 88.253. So that is our heart rate in beats per minute. And to calculate the mean volume of blood, the mean volume of blood leaving the heart or leaving the left ventricle during each contraction is 70 centimetres cubed in this example. So if we want to know how many is going to leave in one minute, and we know that we're going to have 88.253 beats in a minute, we would do 70 multiplied by 88.253. So in total, that then comes to 6,177.71. So that is our first maths question. 
The next bit we then get to is a theory question. So the woman then completed a minute of moderate exercise and that woman would be me. So let's cut to the exercise. Okay, so the woman then completed a minute of moderate exercise and you have to explain what causes her heart rate to increase while she exercises. So this question is now linking mass transport, but actually it's moving into the nervous coordination. So what is controlling the heart rate? So the first thing to note is that if she is doing um, exercise, there's going to be an increase in the rate of respiration. Now I've actually done that shorthand and done an upwards arrowhead, but you would have to write the whole thing in the exam. That'd be your first mark. If we have an increase in respiration, our second mark then would be that there is also going to be, if there's more respiration, there's gonna be an increase in the carbon dioxide production. So that's your second mark. This is now where we can link it to the control of the heart rate. Um, so if there's an increase in CO2, that means the chemoreceptors are going to detect that increase. And those chemoreceptors are found in the carotid artery. So those are going so to detect those that, are gonna increase, detect in that increase in carbon dioxide. And they will then send impulses to the medulla. So that would be the next mark. That will cause impulses to be sent to the medulla, which is the coordination center in the brain. The medulla is then going to cause an increase in the number of impulses sent via the sympathetic nervous system. And this is the nervous system, which um, will result in a decrease. And this is the nervous system that will result in an increase in the heart rate. So more impulses are sent via the sympathetic nervous system. Excuse my horrendous writing on here. I'm trying to write and talk at the same time and I can talk quicker than I can write. And um, so then the final thing that we can add is um, the fact that it's going down the sympathetic nervous system, that is going to cause the SAN to fire, to fire more, frequently. more frequently. And therefore, we're going to have an increase in your heart rate. And that is why your heart rate increases when you exercise. So if we scroll down, the final question is another maths question. Following exercise, the heart rate increased by 105% and you have to calculate what the new heart rate is. So the original heart rate was 88.253 beats per minute, but that's increasing by 105%. So we'll do multiply by 1.05 and that then comes to 92 point six six five beats per minute i'm going to round that up though so we'll say 92.67 beats per minute so now we know that 105 percent equals 92.665 because we have to calculate an increase of 105 percent we need to add that on to the original heart rate so the new heart rate is 180.9 beats per minute. So that's it for today's maths and theory and a tiny bit of application questions. Hope you found it helpful. If you have, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and follow on Instagram to keep up to date on all of the latest help and exam questions to help you to boost your grades.